Very nice. All right, I want to work on, initially what I want to work on today, or at least the first part of today, and that is perfect finish. Gotcha. short game work we worked on the full swing um, and, and the first part of the full swing work was the finish. On the left was some of the swings early on. Uh, I want to go over that first. And there's your finish on uh, that swing. What I wanted to do is just enhance that, make it more complete. And so we, we did a lot of work on that swing into that perfect pose to here. And that's what you're going to see the pros at right there. So that's very good. Now let's back up and look and see what some of, by focusing on that, you actually go through impact a little bit differently, which is good. First on the left, as you go through impact, and you're really not turning that right side through. Here you are when your right arm is, is basically parallel to the ground here. It's called the ninth position. And here you can see that your right knee and right hip are, have rotated much further around. So your belt buckle is facing more to the target. You're off the back foot. Um, and so you're, you're getting more onto the left side. Head is still down. That's very good. Now you still had some issues with hitting things out to the right. The ball was starting to the right because the club face was aiming to the right. You started improving your, your club face position by getting that right hip around. It's kind of with that little drill that we were doing where you were just kind of punching the ball between those sticks with our body swing. And clearly you're turning your hips better on the right, but you still hit a lot with the club face open a little bit. You'll notice that your left hand is above your right hand and your elbows have separated a little bit. Now here you are at the setup position. You can see how close your elbows are together in this position. And on the left we have Tiger. You can see how his arms are straight and elbows close together just like yours are. Now when Tiger comes, gets to that ninth position, when he's at impact right there, his arms are almost like they were at the setup. The elbows are close to each other. And when his right arm is parallel to the ground, his left hand is underneath the right hand. His wrists are crossed and his elbows are close to each other. And that position is a sign that his club face has come around and, and was square through impact. As you come through, your elbows begin to separate. The left elbow starts to separate, and your left hand is above the right hand. 
where Tigers is below the right hand. So we need to work on teaching your hands how to release themselves uh, through impact, how to let that club head naturally turn. You'll see that when Tiger's right arm is parallel to the ground, his shaft of his club is up here. He's starting to re-hinge up. And when your arm is somewhat parallel, your shaft is still down. You haven't really started the re-hinging process. And a lot of it's because of the left hand's position. We're going to have to review that left hand grip and then also make sure that um, your elbows don't separate. We learn how to keep our elbows uh, close to each other as we go through impact. Now when Tiger finishes, has that nice tall finish. As you finish, you're in a very similar position. We can see Tiger's knee right up there next to his other knee. His left leg is nice and straight. One of the things that uh, I would like for you to do, you'll notice that your knee here has gone out past uh, your left leg. That's a sign that your stance is actually too narrow. So I need to widen that stance so that when you turn 90 degrees and face the target, the knee comes up even with the other knee but doesn't go past it. So we need to move this back foot back a little bit which would then move the, the knee back a little bit. So your feet are just a little too close together and that's going to make you feel a little bit wobbly and unstable in your finish. You're not going to be able to, to have a solid finish on that left side. It'll also be easier for you. You can see how Tiger is kind of arching back and he's pushing his belt buckle forward. And, and you're still kind of straight here instead of having a little bit of an arch in your back. And that becomes really difficult for you to do with your narrow stance. So we're going to widen that stance just a little bit. Beautiful. Beautiful shot. I want you to take it a little bit more inside okay. and not so much back here. Okay. I want you to feel like if I had a towel under my armpit, uh -huh. I would not drop it. Okay. I wouldn't get out here and open my armpit up and the towel falls. Right. So you want, I want you to keep your armpit closed so that this elbow is close to your side. Now we also talked about take it. You have a tendency to take it straight back. So when your club is parallel to the ground, right here, you're in that position. And when Grant takes his club back, when his club is parallel, right here, it's behind his hands. So his forearm is going back a little bit. It's more inside than yours. And your forearm is pretty straight back here. And so one of the things that I wanted us to work on was taking it inside just a little bit more that allow that right arm to stay closer to your side. And so when, when Grant gets to parallel to the ground, when his left arm is parallel into this position, now you're parallel, you can see where the shaft of his club is basically pointing down to the ground, but the shaft is, is crossing the, the, the lower part of his ba uh, bicep, right between his right elbow and right bicep. It, that line is crossing that. And when your left arm is parallel, it's too upright. Um, and it's, it's a little bit too upright. I needed it to be better if it was a, just a little bit uh, flatter here. And that would be an indication that you would be taking it inside more. Now we're going to look at your backswing after I, we talked about taking it more inside. And now when this club is parallel to the, the, the ground, you have the club head behind your hands just like Grant did. Here's Grant when his club is parallel. Take you up to the three position. This is when the left arm is parallel to the ground. Again, you now have that shaft 
pointing right at the golf ball. You now have that shaft between your right elbow and, and the, uh, your right bicep. Now on the left was your backswing before we talked about taking it to the inside. And I'm going to take it. Now I'm drawing this red line uh, right from the start, right at the uh, back of your right hand, straight up. And I'm going to take the swing back and stop it as close as I can to when the club shaft is parallel to the ground. That's called the two position. And we can see when your hands have brought the club parallel to the ground, the club head is on this side of the red line. It says, and your hands are right there on top of the red line. So your left arm is basically moved straight back to the camera. Now on the right was when you were consciously thinking about taking it more inside. This, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna take it back and stop it when your shaft is somewhat uh, reasonably close to being parallel to the ground, which is about right there. So both of those shafts are parallel to the ground, but you can see a big difference in, in the direction that your hands went. On the right, your hands are more inside, they're left of the red line, um, whereas on the left, your hands are right on top of the red line. The swing on the left, the before swing, the club head was still in front of your hand, in front of that red line, and you have taken that club head behind your hands and behind the red line on the, on the right. Your left arm is now parallel to the ground, and your left arm is parallel to the ground. And a big difference here, this shaft is, is very much upright. Here, that shaft is, is almost pointing right at the golf ball. Very good. Your shaft is, on the left, is going through your right shoulder. And on the, le uh, and on the right here, your shaft is going between your right elbow and right bicep. And, and so it's much more to the inside there. The backswing position on the right is the more correct one. And that's what we want to start working on. It's going to require more rotation and right from the get-go, more turn right away. Yeah, that, more inside like that. Doesn't have to be quick. It can be smooth. But you're, also, you're going to feel like you're really rotating around your left leg. Yeah. When you go this way, it almost shifts you to the right leg, and you don't feel like you're rotating around your right leg. Right, yeah. Okay, Matt, we're going to look at your setup from down the line angle and uh, as I pointed out in your chipping setup and your chipping posture being having too much knee flex um, you also have a little too much knee flex in your full swing so let's look at this a little bit if I took um, an, a line down the front of Tiger's pants it's almost at nine degrees from the knee to the inside of the angle uh, inside of the ankle and uh, yours is, is much more uh, forward. So there's a, uh, almost a 20 degree angle difference from the knee back. And so if we were to look at this thigh to the knee and then knee down, that's 159 degrees. And if we did that same angle here, a 26 degree difference there and so that's quite a bit uh, so I would like to rework on your posture a little bit next time we get together I hit it 50 yards I'm not just tapping to there right. but I want to see if I can go down the railroad track so I'm just going to tap but I, I could try to swing like that and not move anything here or I could my right hip. That helps. I don't, that club got square without my hands having to manipulate the face. Right. The body squared it up. Right. This is quiet. Club square. Club is not square. It's aiming over there. Right. Club is square. It's gonna go where I want. Right. This. So sometimes we can get. If we if we give too much responsibility to the hands, 
they're going to be erratic in, in where this is. Right. They're going to guess right sometimes and guess wrong a lot. If we, if we say, hey, it's not even your job anymore, just be quiet, the body's going to square it out. Oh, okay. Right. You're going to have a more stable face every time. This here is going to be a lot more consistent than this is. Right. So I want you to really feel this elbow in your side. I'm literally, my armpit is closed, and my elbow is in, is there, is there a seam on this shirt? See, the seam of my shirt is here. My elbow's on the front of it, not right. behind it. Behind it. On the right elbow. Right elbow. So my elbow is in front here, and, and it's going to stay in front as, as I bump it. I'm just right. bumping. So all I want you to do is what you saw me do. So you're just doing a body swing. You're kind of locking the face where you want it and then forgetting about it. Gotcha. You're just going to bump it with your right body and shoulder and chest. Okay, don't swing any bigger than that. It was good. Hit it with that right hip. Okay. Solid and straight, consistent. Good. Better. It's almost in your mind. Put it, put the club at the ground and slowly push it towards me. As it, as this comes through, you almost want to feel like the toe is pointing up now. So you're not trying to come through and hold it open, hold it square. Right. Let it turn over. Let it turn over. Let's get that. One of the things you were doing well to get the, between those lines is you really turn this, your right. right side. And I think now you're not. Okay. So let's really try to rotate those this. hips around, yeah. Okay, we're in the fairway. So it appears that that's a, a swing thought you need. Yeah. The right hip. Right hip, yeah. Now right now, in order to um, understand the geometry that's taking place to create that particular ball flight. Right. I'm gonna create that ball flight you just hit. Okay. I'll try to anyway. higher, but the kind of what you did. I'm going to try to not create it on this one. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So what did I do differently? There's two things in a swing that you can control, or you should try to control. One is where the face is pointing at impact. Right. On both of those, I had the face about the same place. Okay. The one, the first one might have been slightly open, right? But it kind of started straight and then curved straight. But the biggest difference was the was the path of the club, right? Because it's not my natural swing, I had to consciously and intentionally swing left on the first one right. to make it slice right. right. And on the second one, I I swung out. Okay. I swung to the right, which is scary right. when you're hitting to the right. Right. But I swing to the right when I want to hook it to the left. Okay. Just, I've had a beach ball. I would swing out to make it curve this way. I'd right. brush it. And so, one of the things that you need to feel is a, an outward swing path. One of the best drills is your feet together. And you'll get excessive hooks. Right. But you'll, it's almost impossible to swing left when right. your feet are together. Right. You almost, you can't, you can almost have to swing with extended arms and out. So let's do a couple of feet together drills with the driver. So it's almost upper body only.
Okay, not bad.